third factor that is affecting lift-induced drag is the structure of the AF aircraft. And that is what the Siloni just mentioned about the ratio, which is the aspect ratio. What is aspect ratio? The ratio of wingspan, yeah, by wing code. What is wingspan? That's right. So let's let me just draw the wing here. Just run the wing part only, right? Yes, Nuch, wingspan is the wing tip, so wing tip distance. <coughs> you can see it also includes the fuselage part. You're not cutting the fuselage part off, that part is also included. You took the aircraft here, you just take a scale and measure from wing tip to wing tip, scale it up, and that's the wingspan, which means this part is also included. It's not like you add this. And then you add this. No, this is also included in that. The middle part. Yes, wing tip to wing tip. That is wing span. Now, what is code? Vector. Vector of the wing. So if you take a Why rectangular wing, like this, this is a rectangular wing. This is not rectangular, it's more like tapered. This is a rectangular wing. It's very easy to explain what our code is. So, code is basically, yes, what is it? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, so basically what is code line? Code line is a straight line joining the centers of curvature of the forward um, edge and the trailing the leading edge and trailing yeah, yeah, yeah. edge of the wing. Right? Center of curvature of the leading edge, trailing edge. This is the code line, the length of the code line. is what is called as the code, right? The ratio of these two, the wingspan to the code is what is called as aspect ratio. We have seen this also in one of the classes. Let's see it again. Uh, two different aircrafts to actually understand this aspect ratio a bit more. Let's take a glider. So what's the meaning of aspect here? Same. So aspect meaning? Aspect means the structure. Aspect meaning? The aspect, the aspect of the uh, the, the, the way it is structured. So it's basically talking about the ratio between two structures, not like lift drag ratio. It's not the ratio between structures, it's more like with the forces. This is actually the structural, the length of the structures, we're taking a ratio of that, which is called as aspect. But that goes for most of the manufacturing like, uh, device, like equipments. You have an aspect for that. So that aspect will tell you how tall is it for a given thickness, how thick is it for a given width, all those things, that's how we define aspect. So look at the an egg glider here. What is the peculiarity of a glider? Gliders have very long wingspan. <coughs> right? Look at your uh, your Cessna or something. So this is a glider. This is your Cessna. Which of these have a greater aspect ratio? Gliders. Gliders. There's a longer wingspan. That's right. It has a greater wingspan and lesser wing code. So what kind of a wing is that of a glider? It's more like a long, thin wing. Yes, Anuj. The gliders have longer, thinner wings. Long, thin wings. So what happens when it is long and it is thin? The aspect ratio will be higher. What about a Cessna? It's more like a short, not very short, but a normal short, thick wing. So talk about the actual thickness like this. It's just the just the code thing, and therefore it has a low aspect ratio. No. Think about fighter jets. Like a con or or, or aircraft with a Concorde. Drawing a very typical representation but you can understand when it draws a triangle like this have you seen fighter jets like this it's more like a triangular looking aircraft uh, if you look at the of uh, the uh, the blackbird uh, sr17 all those things if you've seen all those uh, it's all all like this structure here. right so this is more like as for example speedbird uh, it is 
What can you say about the wing? It is even more shorter, very short and thick. And therefore it is having very low what? Very low aspect ratio. Now look at these three aircrafts here. You're looking at a glider, looking at a Cessna, and looking at a speedbird. Now, what can you connect aspect ratio to the purpose for which these aircrafts are used? Speed, yeah. Speed. So, exactly. So you see, if you look at gliders, out of the three, this is the slowest of all, and that is the fastest. Mm. The slowest one has a higher aspect ratio. The fastest one has a lower aspect ratio. Why is that so? Because of the speed. Okay. Can you explain no, a bit more? No. We yes. already discussed this. Uh, yeah, uh, we have. Yes, we have. Yes, that's right. So what, what happens it? when you have? Uh, so what makes you thrust forward more? When will be will you be able to run forward faster? Or when when do you think an aircraft will be able to fly forward faster? With all the available thrust, yeah, when you have yeah, less drag, more, less. when the drag is lesser, when the opposing force is actually lesser, you'll be able to fly faster. Minimum drag, right? The least drag. Which of these aircrafts will demand that more? A glider or, a, or, gliders. or the other one? Like gliders. Ah, you, so you see here. Uh, yeah, why? That's right. Why? Why would gliders need minimum drag while not a big requirement? They don't have engines. Right? That's a, They don't have engines. That's right. They have no engines. They don't have much of power. Uh, you're not uh, talking about motorized gliders, but general <coughs> gliders. There is no thrust producing mechanism, which means your drag has to be kept minimum. Minimum. If you minimum. have so much of a drag and there's no thrust producing device, and what is going to thrust is the one that is countering drag, right? Therefore, uh, that is the reason why. So we need a minimum thrust for gliders. It's a requirement. How can you produce minimum, minimum, sorry, minimum, uh, minimum drag? How can, how can this drag be reduced? See, parasitic drag can be reduced more like by streamlining, by making the surface more cleaner, by, by using fillets and very curved surfaces rather than putting sharp points. You've seen that. So you can reduce parasitic drag. You can further reduce the drag by reducing the lift induced drag. Right? Now you see what kind of a drag is lift induced drag? It is induced because of lift. See the amount of lift produced by the glider, it has to be very, very high because it doesn't have any mechanism to keep it up in the air. Therefore, the system itself has to produce high amount of lift. What happens when you have high amount of lift? Your lift induced drag is also going to be higher. Basically, we are trying to reduce the drag as much as possible. So how can this drag be reduced? By streamlining it, by making the surface clean, etc. You can reduce a parasitic drag. How will you reduce the lift induced drag? That is why we have a higher aspect ratio. Now, how can high aspect ratio reduce the lift induced drag? So look at the wing here. It's a long, thin wing. Look at a very, very long and thin wing. As compared to a thicker wing. Look at these two wings here. Which of these wings will have more lift induced drag? Second one, sir. This one, right? Yes, yes. Why is it so? Yes. Because you have more air wing. Yeah. You have more, you have more, more wing tip surface for the air to actually kind of leak. Right? Over here, yeah. it doesn't have so much of a surface, therefore, the wing tip water is, water is production is actually weaker. So when wing tip production is weaker, the standwise flow is less, uh, the production of eddies is lesser, the rearward deflection of the lift component is lesser, and therefore this produces very less lift induced drag as compared to a thicker wing here. Understood? So now by using a thin, long thin wing, we have reduced lift induced drag. And therefore, what produces the total drag curve kind of crash? Let's see that here. So let's draw the drag curve. So, so the total the total drag curve we have the parasitic drag. Which what, what is the variation of parasitic drag component with speed? 
zero to maximum. Yeah, so it increases with speed. Correct? What about uh, lift induced drag with speed? It drops from higher to lower. Yeah. As speed increases, lift induced drag drops. And what do you get from this graph by adding these two? Total drag. Yeah, this is the total drag. This is also total thrust required. Now you see what happened when we increase the aspect ratio. What did we do? Lift induced drag will reduce. Lift induced drag is going to reduce. So let's see that here. Lift induced drag is straight here. That is going to reduce for any given speed. So you can see lift induced drag is kind of reducing. What what is the effect on total drag? Reduces. Total drag <coughs> reduces. At the same time, uh, let's put something else here. To which direction do you think the total drag is going to shift? Is it going to shift towards the left or the right? So, because yeah, it's going to shift towards the left because the lift induced drag has shifted towards the left. It's not that the lift induced okay. drag is dropped like this, it dropped and shifted to the left. Therefore, the net, the total drag curve is also going to shift towards the left. Towards left more? Yeah, yeah but uh, yeah, yeah. it's going to shift more towards the left. Understood? So, but as far as the understanding is required, we just have to understand that when we increase the aspect ratio, your wingtip vortex production is reduced, that reduces lift induced drag, and when lift induced drag reduces, the total drag reduces. Right? Now, if you are not sure about why that there's a left shift, think about where the minimum drag is there now. Where's the minimum drag? The minimum drag is at the intersection of lift induced drag and parasitic drag. It was here earlier. Now where is it? Now it's here. Right? So the earlier the minimum drag was here, now where is the minimum drag? It's going to be here. So you understood that shift to the left. The total curve is shifting to the left. And therefore you can see the VMD, which was initially here, has now shifted to the left. So now you have a lower VMD lower minimum drag speed are you able to follow remember we have discussed yes, this about this in performance if you remember navigation a little bit of this was discussed but not in detail like this but yeah um, any questions so now did you understand why do you need, we need to make gliders with a high aspect ratio yes sir that is reduced lift induced drag what about but what is the problem with having a high lift why so why can't i make it the same for the speedboard I'm having less less drag. So that, uh, structural damage you have That's to it. The structural damage. Okay, you, have, you have so much of a wing exposed to very high speed. The mm -hmm. wing moment at the wing root is going to be very very high, and the wing is going to break. It's not practically possible to make it structurally sound at that wingspan and at that velocity. And velocity is the key there. We need to fly faster. So that is why military people not really bother about the fuel and stuff. They have all the fuel. They put whatever high thrust uh, drag they have. That's fine. We have so much of fuel. We produce so much of thrust. And oh, commercial aircrafts, on the other hand, like Cessna or maybe uh, the other uh, Airbus and stuff, they are not that happy with spending so much of fuel and flying like a Concorde. At the same time, not really happy flying so slow and getting so much of a lift. Uh, so they have that thing in between where they compromise between fuel efficiency and speed. That was one of the disadvantages of Concorde. You see what the problem with Concorde is? Concorde flies at a very high altitude, so the drag is comparatively lesser, but still, it consumes so much of fuel. Uh, there's some, that it depends on the, air base, on the base of engine as well. So Concorde has this uh, engines where it consumes most of the, most of the power or thrust is produced from the fuel itself, and therefore consumes so much of fuel, and the tickets are very expensive. And that is why it did not really survive. Uh, one of the reasons for that. Yes, but do you understand how that structure, the aspect ratio is connected to the purpose for which the aircraft is designed so we cannot make it a very high aspect ratio here because we need these aircrafts to fly faster and that's going to produce so much of a moment strain at the at the wing road 
Understood? Yes, so what can you say about lift induced drag and aspect ratio? How can you connect these two? Lift induced drag and aspect ratio? More aspect ratio, less uh, drag. More aspect ratio, less lift induced drag. So how can you connect it? Yeah. It's proportional to? That's it? Lift induced drag is proportional to? 1 by aspect ratio. All right, is it clear to other, all, all of you other than that? Yeah, Charan, Hiloni, how aspect ratio is yes. the? Yes, all right, perfect. Now, what is the advantage of having a higher aspect ratio? So you should be able to physically understand all those things, not just on the basis of equations and graphs. So let's, that's why. So let's see two different aircrafts, one a glider, other a Cessna, not go to speed, but we'll look at the smaller ones here, glider and the, and the Cessna. Which of these has a higher aspect ratio? Glider. Glider, yes. So what is the meaning of that? At any given, so if we have that for the, uh, uh, the graph here, we'll explain after that. This is the aspect ratio, so this is, this, is the, this is the coefficient of lift. Remember, this actually dictates the capacity of these wings to produce lift. This can produce more lift compared to this. So that's all, talking about coefficient of lift, which is the capacity of the aircraft to, the wing to produce lift. So coefficient of lift with angle of attack, right? Uh, which of these wings, now understand, which of these wings will produce higher lift at the same angle of attack? Glider. Glider. So if, if, I, if I draw a diamond with a glider, you see the angle of attack here? And the same thing with the Cessna. Again, the same angle of attack, alpha, alpha. The glider is going to get so much of a lift and climb like to look all the way up because the same angle of attack, it has so much of an aspect ratio, so less lift induced drag, it's going to produce more lift. Therefore, if I draw two different graphs, you one with a high aspect ratio. This is a High aspect ratio, that's more to do with the glider here. Right? And then we have a Cessna with a lower aspect ratio. Lower aspect ratios for the Cessna here. Now, will you understand if I draw the graphs like this? You take any given angle of attack. So, when we increase the angle of attack, the aircraft is going to start at a point. Mm. So see here, for this angle of attack alpha, for a given angle of attack, which of the wing is going to produce more coefficient of lift? So I don't know, see here, coefficient of lift, if you remember, you told me last time, it's the capacity of the wing to produce lift. Right? The wing with lower aspect ratio will produce lesser lift compared to the wing with higher aspect ratio. So any given angle of attack, the wing with higher aspect ratio is going to produce more lift. More, more CL means more lift. Coefficient of lift, lift, right? Now you can say this in a different way. If I take, let's draw another, another graph here. Yes, hello, may I hear? And I'll leave you soon, don't worry, I won't keep you long. Coefficient of lift and angle of attack. Let's draw the diagrams again. No, we'll give you time to draw this, so don't worry. High aspect ratio is for the glider. And then we have low aspect ratio is for your system. So we saw here, at any given angle of attack, the, uh, the aircraft with a high aspect ratio wing will produce higher lift. Right? So think about it. For takeoff, you roll, a glider has to probably pitch a little bit up, or not even pitch up, it's going to work. But for a Cessna, you have to pitch up a bit more for the same rate of climb. Because for Cessna, the lift-induced drag which is there is going to reduce the effective lift. But for, for glider, 
we have deliberately reduced it by making its aspect ratio higher. So now, look at this, uh, for a, so we saw for a given angle of attack, how the coefficient of lift would be. Now let's see for a given coefficient of lift, how the angle of attack would be. So, for a given coefficient of lift, Yes, yes, sir. If I want to have a particular coefficient of lift in a high aspect ratio wing, I can achieve it at a lower angle of attack. Yes. For the same lower angle, angle. Yeah. correct? The same efficiency or capacity ability of lift production for a low aspect ratio wing can be achieved only at a higher angle of attack. So yes. here we are looking at a particular angle of attack and seeing at a given angle of attack, high aspect ratio produces more coefficient of lift. At a given coefficient of lift, high aspect ratio wing can achieve a given coefficient of lift at a lower angle of attack. Right? Now, at a given angle of attack, if I fix the angle of attack for a glider and Cessna, so if I have two different aircrafts, one a glider, so I have two different aircrafts, one a glider, and the Cessna, same angle of attack, if this is a glider, this is going to go have a higher lift compared to Cessna. Right? Now, so usually you can compare both the graphs together. Yeah. In one case, you are increasing your coefficient of lift, in another, you are increasing angle of attack. Correct. Not increasing, you are fixing. You are fixing the angle of attack, yeah. you are fixing the coefficient of lift. Right? So, in the first case, you are fixing the angle of attack. So, both the aircraft, <coughs> same angle of attack, the glider is going to have a higher uh, lift produced. Second case, you are fixing the lift production. So, I want both the aircrafts to go up at the same rate. The Cessna has to have a higher angle of attack. For it to have the same lift production. Make sense? Yeah. That is what the graph is saying. This graph is very, very helpful in understanding this concept, these two graphs. And that's why I have drawn this. It's not available, probably, it's there in your Oxford, but given a bit clumsier. Uh, but so, probably, you can actually draw this uh, behind your book as well. This is the variation of uh, coefficient of lift with angle of attack for high and low aspect ratio wings. So make, make it a point to actually learn this. So these are the three factors affecting the lift in your drive. One is the lift force or the pressure difference or the weight. Second is the speed and third is the aspect ratio.